this video was funded by my amazing patrons. If you would like to have access to the behind the scenes, see the videos early, and influence the creation, please feel free to check the link below. Kingdom of Hungary, 1599. Deep in the Hungarian countryside, surrounded by lavish hills of a vast sea of green, is a formidable structure known as Kashtise Castle. The countess of this beautiful landscape is responsible for the welfare of her estate, and she's providing for the peasants of the 17 surrounding villages. It's situated on the border of Royal Hungary and Ottoman-occupied Hungary, and due to the tensions between these two factions, the villages that fall in the way of Vienna are in extreme danger of plundering and pilferage. But despite these black times, the peasants' lives are rather simple. From farmers taking care of the livestock and the vast acres of crops, to the blacksmiths spending their long days in the immense heat of the forge. The Count, one Ferenc Nadasidi, is currently away fighting in what is known as the Long War. On the battlefield, he is known for his fierce fighting and unbreakable demeanor, and has helped conquer castles Estragon and Visegrad, along with many others. It was from the Wallachian ruler Vlad III that he adopted his most brutal exploits. By displaying his enemies in such a savage way, he has sent shockwaves of fear across the Ottoman Empire. Because of this, Ferenc's allies have named him the Black Knight of Hungary. With war raging across parts of the kingdom, sadly many peasants are forced to abandon their homes. The Countess has shown kindness and generosity to those affected, giving them shelter in the vast estate. She has proved time and again that she is an efficient manager and a caring woman. The peasants fully believe she has their best interests at heart. Her name is one Elizabeth Bathory. But her name isn't known for kindness and generosity. And by this point, the rumors about the infamous Kashtise castle were already starting to circulate, as unnameable horrors were taking place behind the thick stone walls. But was any of it true? In order to understand what led Elizabeth Bathory to become so infamous, we must go back to the birth of the so-called Blood Countess. Nivatal, Hungary, August 7th, 1560. Anna Bathory has just given birth to a baby girl in the bedchambers of Exet Castle. As her husband, Baron George VI, looks upon his newborn baby daughter, the couple name her Ezeret Bathory, later known as Elizabeth. Being born to one of the most prominent and richest families in all of Europe, Elizabeth is given the best education and noble upbringing possible. As her young years pass by, spending her childhood in the family's castle, she learns how to speak Latin, German, Hungarian, and Greek, even showing a keen interest in the sciences and mathematics. And though she is still just an adolescent, she is coming to immense wealth and social standing. But Elizabeth isn't a healthy child. Many times to the family's dismay, they have witnessed their young daughter fall into violent seizures and moments of extreme rage, and she is diagnosed with falling sickness, an archaic term for what is now known as epilepsy. Due to her parents being first cousins, it is speculated that this has attributed to the disorder, and she will continue to have these violent episodes throughout her adolescence. Not much else is known about her younger years, but there are a few key events that will shape the young girl into one of the most feared women of the medieval period. One day, a band of wayfaring travelers arrive at the castle. Stopping at the gate, they cordially request an audience with the Baron as they wish to entertain the court with their music and jests. After some deliberation, they are let through and later that night, the festivities are in full swing and the court is in good spirits. With great music and exquisite food, the atmosphere in the hall is electric. But some point during the night, one of the travelers, most likely a little drunk, confines to the commander of the garrison. He tells him with an air of arrogance how he happily sold his son to the Ottomans. This treacherous act quickly brings the festivities to an abrupt end as the man is beaten and taken away. 
A little time later, Elizabeth is awoken to the sound of a blood-curdling scream. Sneaking out of her chambers, she makes her way down to the grounds of the castle. She witnesses the soldiers bring out a horse as they hold the wayfaring stranger in their tight grips. What happens next is beyond grotesque. The horse is killed and slit from neck to navel, and its organs are removed, leaving a deep cavity in its chest. The traveler is then stuffed inside, trying his hardest to fight back, but with no luck. The gaping wound is stitched shut, leaving his head exposed, and his fate is sealed. As the morning dawn begins to break, he is slowly cooked in the hot sun. The horse's decaying flesh congealing and dripping onto his body, and he is feasted upon by maggots. Slowly, the heat inside the horse becomes more and more extreme as the traveler begins to dehydrate, and eventually, he will perish in the light of the morning sun. However, instead of being utterly distraught and horrified by the event, Elizabeth simply points and laughs at the man's agony. This isn't the first time she has seen horrific violence, as the servants of the castle are regularly beaten for the smallest misdemeanors, and Elizabeth, in her moments of unbridled rage, has joined in on the punishments, and it's even believed that her aunt taught the young girl some extremely depraved acts. But one of the most frightening is that of Elizabeth's uncle, a devil-worshipping alchemist who would regularly practice the dark arts similar to Gilles de Rey a war hero who fought alongside Joan of Arc, but also had a propensity to violence, and would kidnap children for his pleasure and keep their heads as trophies. It is never stated what the uncle was attempting to accomplish by invoking the devil, but just like a lot of Elizabeth's life, there is no hard evidence to support the supposed black mass taking place in her family's castle. Now 11 years old, Elizabeth is betrothed to one Ferenc Nadasidi, another aristocrat from a wealthy Hungarian family. But the engagement is nearly tarnished when Elizabeth, at the age of just 13, has an affair with a peasant boy and gives birth to a baby girl. When Ferenc learns of the event, his rage is unprecedented, and he has the boy tracked down. The young peasant is taken out to the Hungarian wilderness and tied to a tree, Petrified of the events to come, he pleads for his life, but it falls upon deaf ears. He is castrated, and his manhood thrown to the wolves before he himself is fed to the beasts. The child is quietly hidden from view, and by the time Elizabeth is 15, they're married. Because Elizabeth socially outranked her husband, she keeps her surname of Bathory, and Ferenc adds it to his own. The lavish affair of the wedding was a spectacle with around 4,500 guests attending and the celebrations going on for days, at the height of which Elizabeth is gifted Kashtise Castle and the surrounding villages. After the wedding, Ferenc spends most of his time in Vienna as he continues to pursue his education, but he leaves his new wife a rather unique parting gift. In the bowels of Kashtise Castle is a chamber. It has been built to Elizabeth's specifications, and it is here where most of her brutal acts will be recorded. There is some debate that Ferenc actually schooled Elizabeth in all matter of atrocities, and they both bonded as husband and wife to the suffering of their servants, from jamming pins under the fingernails and burning them with red-hot irons. He supposedly also gifted his wife a clawed glove, but Ferenc drew the line at murder and kept his wife in check. But that could only last for so long. It's 1601, and all is quiet at the castle. Ferenc is away at war, leaving Elizabeth to take care of the estate and raise their five children. With the immense pressure on the kingdom's economy, many are feeling the strain, but not Elizabeth. Ferenc continues to shower his love with constant gifts, and in a rather unique play of power, Elizabeth even loans money to the struggling kingdom to keep up with the war. But all the gifts and charity in the world cannot quell her bloodlust. Without her husband's restraint, it finally reaches its boiling point, but she doesn't do it alone. Sometime during the year, a woman by the name of Anna Darvolia arrives at the castle. 
She's a strong-willed Croatian woman who serves as the Countess's advisor, and she's described as a wild beast in female form. And according to rumors spread around the villages, she is also a witch. Where Ferenc exposed Elizabeth to the pleasures of punishing and torturing the servants in a macabre circus of pain, Anna Darvolia teaches the Countess the euphoria of killing. But she isn't the only accomplice in the castle. The nursemaid by the name of Ilona Joe has been with the family for decades. With the Countess's children, she is kind and playful. Towards the servants, her actions are brutal. Another woman by the name of Dorotoya, also known as Dorka, is a relatively new arrival to the castle, and it's speculated she was lured into servitude by the nursemaid under false pretenses. But instead of being a victim to the Countess, she has somehow managed to work her way into the inner circle and become one of the torturers. Due to her position of being a previous victim, Dorka and Anna Darvolia constantly try to outdo each other with their brutality in a competition of flesh. And lastly, the youngest of the accomplices is a disfigured teenager by the name of Janos, nicknamed Fisco. The young man has served the Countess for at least 16 years, and according to rumor, the lady is quite fond of him. It is between these five that the horrors are finally realized, and behind these stone walls, the sadistic circle will unleash unnameable terror on the villages below. But how would it happen? Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. I've been Mr. Blank, and you've been watching Beyond the Dark.